Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about shadows. Shadow nose. So, why is it important to have a shadow? Well, first of all, and primarily, it helps to anchor the object that you're painting and helps them have it sitting on the table. It also kind of lets people know where the light source is coming from. Uh, you know, from a window, big light stand, or something like that. One more little point I want to show you is that the shadow goes away from the light source. Sometimes we get a little dyslexic there, and we had the shadow going towards the light source. It goes away. Now, you know all this stuff. Let me point it out to you. Here on the wall is a simple ball. That's the concept. And you have a shadow, and it sits on the shadow. Here I like to, just for fun, put some red in here so it looks like it's reflecting down into the shadow. I like to play that color game with shadows. So it's a pretty strong uh, shadow, and you can certainly see by the light side of that ball where the light's coming from. Some window off, off the screen there. Now down below is a pineapple. I mean, I paint everything especially fruits and vegetables. Again, I love to have some of this hot pink here on this side and pretend it's shining down into the shadow. It makes the shadow a little bit more painterly and also it helps to tie it all in as opposed to a big black line there. Alrighty, and I, I tend to make the shadow the complementary color of say the sunlight. So if the sunlight's orange, the shadow's going to be somewhat purplish, bluish, alrighty. Don't always do it. Here's another strong light coming from this direction. And this, instead of bluish, I just took the same colors that were here in the pair. I just threw them in there. My, my warm-ups, even when I'm doing my, my carrot figures, even in the warm-up techniques, I'm still putting a, a shadow. Otherwise, they'd be floating in space. All right. I'm just really adding a sh shadow to make it more convincing. Alrighty, so here's a coffee cup. I do a lot of coffee cups here again. Now, this is interesting. This is red and shining on a light blue tablecloth. What color is the shadow? Well, you mix the two together, you're gonna have some of a violet color. I'm making all this stuff up just to make, make it more fun for me to paint, all right? So here's another situation where I'm pretending the light's coming inside that bottle of red wine and bouncing around in here and shines into the shadow itself. So now the shadow gets to be a little bit red. Okay, here's a still life with a lots of different kinds of shadows. This is a good example of bringing in more of a bluish shadow. And you know that it must be pretty bright outside. All righty, but now let's get back to the table because I have so many more things to show you and I'm gonna do some demos. So here are some rather simple still lives. Uh, I like to experiment with different kinds of shadows, even though I'm painting the same thing over and over and over and over again. That's called practice. And uh, I still like to play around with a really strong shadow, which again, emphasizes where the light's coming from. Here's a kind of a, kind of a Wayne Tebow-ish type of a painting in one of my coffee cup series. It just ended up that way. But here again, I have the yellow coffee cup and the shadow, which would be bluish. But when I hit the yellow coffee cup, it turns green. So I get to play like that too. That's kind of fun stuff. And on the inside of the, uh, the coffee cup, I could have had a, a darker yellow, but I just picked up the same purple that I had inside over here and added it over here. Continuing on over here, even just, here's where I get to play with different colors. No matter what I'm doing, I still have my dark, light, dark, light, and blue shadow. Those shadows can be any colors, by the way, any colors. And just to point out, I'm gonna do a landscape now. This is one of my abstract, really loose landscapes, but uh, I don't really show uh, where the sh shadows are. 
on this one. So I need to emphasize the tree trunks and I'm gonna be doing kind of negative space painting. So you can see the, the landscape here was done at the same time as the trees. Now I'm gonna be doing some negative shape painting. Here we go. I'm gonna do it so you can see it. This was the, this was about three steps. Now I'm up to this level. I had the shape of the trees. I did the negative shape painting there. Here are my tree trunks. It's the same color. I just came in with this light blue. Now I'm gonna add some, some red, because I wanna make it look like it's kind of a, a sunset or early morning. You can tell that the sun must be over here because now this one's going to be going off, off this direction. I just I just do that for for pure fun. Then my finger comes in and emphasizes tree trunks. There we go. How about a red one over here? Whoa! And I'm using negative space and then fade it away a little bit I like that red I'm gonna have it come down in here do it again really like that I think I'm gonna add some blue shadows in here let's see what that looks like there's my blue Oh yeah, I like it. This is more, it's more fun. I've made the tree trunks darker and the shadows. Remember the shadow can only be as wide as the tree trunk. <laughs> Don't make the shadow wider. Of course you can do anything you want to do. <laughs> Let's bring some up into here. There we go. There. Still keeping it loose. Not too specific. I don't want to get too tight here. In fact, I'm wiping some of it away. There we go. And I'm going to play with this color of that shadow. Add some yellow to it, which makes it turn green. Anyway. Think about shadows, it helps the viewer know where the light's coming from. For instance, I'm gonna add some white in here. I'm doing it with my finger, only because it's quicker for a demo. And let's get some over here. Really emphasizing these tree trunks now, huh? Because I'm giving it more contrast. Make sure if you use your hands with no gloves, make sure you use some kind of hand lotion <clears throat> to protect your hands. Like Burt's Bees. That kind of a stuff. All right, I'm gonna stop at this point. I think I made my point. Even with tree trunks, you wanna make sure that the trees are growing out of the landscape, not just sitting on top of a thin line, or something like that. Hey, practice this all the time, and uh, it will make the your recognizable objects more recognizable, all righty? But not necessarily, not necessarily in abstracts, usually, there may not be a light source in an abstract, so why put a shadow? That's where we like to have a lot of things scribbling around and floating in space in those wonderful abstracts. Hey, I hope you enjoyed shadows. The shadow knows, and I'll see you at my next Bob Blast.
Hi, this is Bob Burridge, inviting you back to another virtual jury show. The last ones were so successful, we decided to do another one. And this one is called Mirror Image, a reflection. It can either be about yourself, it can be about your best friend, it can be abstract, it can be realism your interpretation and it can, so as you can see here it can be from realistic to abstract your interpretation i love this theme mirror image so 2d all paintings i can't wait to do all of this and we have sharon de julio who is our national juror for this one you want to get into the show because she has such great explosive tastes on all kinds of art. You know, she used to run the Art of the Carolinas and now she's somewhat retired, but we pulled her out of retirement so she can now jury your work. This is gonna be exciting. This $2,000 worth of prizes, mirror image, your interpretation. Good luck and remember the deadline is May the 3rd. Hurry up and start painting your portraits of anyone you want. Take care. Thanks for watching.